Hey there, photographers. Brenda Petrella here with Outdoor Photography School, where we help you create better images and reconnect with nature. And I don't know about you, but I've had a hard time reconnecting with nature lately with this whole quarantine situation that we have going on. And I also recently busted my foot, and so I'm actually in a walking boot, and so I can't go hiking right now either. But I'm using this as an opportunity to go through my photo archive and edit images that I either haven't gotten around to yet or rework some images that I didn't feel like I got the editing quite right. So in today's video, I thought I would share with you one of the ways in which I use Photoshop layers and layer masks to do some image editing. So let's hop on over to the computer. So here we have an image that I took a couple of summers ago in the Canadian Yukon. And you can see from this image that it's a bit underexposed. And I did that on purpose because I wanted to expose for the sky and I didn't want to lose any of the detail in the clouds. And I was using a Nikon D850. And so I knew the dynamic range of the raw file was going to be pretty good and that I likely would be able to recover some of the shadow detail in the trees down here in the foreground area. So I've already gone ahead and made some of my initial adjustments in Lightroom, which are applied to the entire image. So these are things like adjusting the white balance a little bit, bringing up the exposure so that I can see the shadow detail, bringing up the shadows a little bit and just sort of playing with the white and black set points. And that's basically it. And now from here, I'm going to bring it into Photoshop so that I can do these much more fine detail adjustments using layers and layer masks. So to do that, I'm just going to right click on the image and scroll on up to edit in Adobe Photoshop. And now it will open Adobe Photoshop and it'll take a minute. Okay, so now the image is open in Photoshop. And when you transfer an image from Lightroom into Photoshop, it's opened as a background layer and background layers are usually locked. And so you just have to unlock that to turn it into a normal layer by just clicking on that padlock button. And at this point, you can also rename it if you want to. So let's just call this base layer. Now, if you're brand new to Photoshop layers and the concepts of layer masks, then I recommend checking out my previous video, which goes over all of the very basic concepts of how to use layers and layer masks in Photoshop. And in today's video, I'm just going to show you how to use those same concepts, but as applied to an actual image. So the first thing that I'm going to do when I approach this image is ask myself, what is it that I want to change? So the first thing I would like to change is the contrast of the sky. I don't really wanna change that anywhere else in the image as much as I want to change it in the sky. And so to do that, I'm going to create a, an adjustment layer where I change the contrast of the sky. And then I'm going to use a layer mask so that I can block out that adjustment to any other part of the image. So the first thing I'm gonna do is come over to the the adjustments panel. Now, if you don't have the adjustments panel showing anywhere on your screen, then it's probably that it hasn't been selected. So if you just pop on over to window and scroll down to adjustments, just make sure that that check mark is on and then you'll be able to see this little adjustments panel. The other way that you can access adjustment layers is through this button at the bottom panel. And you can see how if I hover over it, it says create new fill or adjustment layer. And then if I click on it, it gives you all of these different options. So right now I'm going to add a levels adjustment layer. When I click on the levels adjustment layer, two things happen. One, this little box pops out, which shows me my RGB histogram, and I can adjust the tonal values here on the histogram, and I can see that reflected in the image, and we'll do that in just a second. Now look down here at the panels layer. Here we have this half-filled circle, and this is indicating that this is a now an adjustment layer on top of my base layer. And anytime you add an adjustment layer, regardless of what kind of an adjustment layer it is, Photoshop automatically links a white layer mask to that adjustment layer. Now recall from that previous video that white masks reveal everything that that mask is attached to. So in this case, with a white mask attached to my adjustment layer, whatever adjustment I make, I'll be able to see it. In contrast, if I had a black layer mask, black hides everything that it's attached to. So if I inverted my layer mask from a white mask to a black mask, now I'm not gonna see any of that adjustment layer. And I'm gonna show you examples of both. So let's first start with what Photoshop does by default and let's go ahead and make our adjustment. Now, the first time I do this, I'm gonna show you an extreme example just so it's easier to see. So let's say I really go nuts with my contrast here. Now, I don't like this effect, but again, this is just for an example. 
So notice that this adjustment that I just made has been applied to the entire image and not just the sky, but really I'm just interested in making an adjustment to the sky. I can use the layer mask to paint out the areas of the adjustment that I don't want to be applied to the image. So also recall that when you have a white layer mask, you need to use a black paintbrush to paint away the white layer mask. So let's try that. So with my bounding box selected on the layer mask, I'm going to come over here to my color picker and right now white is picked because it's the box that's in front but I really want the black and all I have to do is use this double arrow to click and get black forward. If you don't have white or black here you can just click on the color and drag the brush down into the black corner and click OK. So now you should have the black paint selected and all I have to do now is select my paintbrush. Now, if you come up here to the little settings for the paintbrush, I'm going to use a hardness setting of zero, which is the softest brush. And I tend to find that that works best for doing things like painting layer masks on and off. Let's start with an opacity at 100. We can always adjust that later. And that's how much of the painting job is being applied to the mask. Flow is sort of like how much paint is on the paintbrush, like how wet your paintbrush is. And we can keep that around 50 for now. And smoothing, this is sort of how fast you're painting with your paintbrush with. And I'm just gonna keep that around 10. Now, if you want to adjust the size of your paintbrush, a shortcut to do that is to use the right and left square brackets on the keyboard. And so the right bracket makes the paintbrush bigger and the left bracket makes the paintbrush smaller. So let's just pick a big size brush right now and start to paint with our black paintbrush over the foreground here to bring that back out. So you can already see that by using the black paintbrush, I painted away the white mask, which hid that adjustment layer so that I could see through to the layer below the adjustment layer. Now, if I wanted to see what this looks like on the actual mask, all I have to do is hold down option and click on the layer mask and this is what the layer mask looks like so it's white on top and then you can see my soft edged brush here by that like hazy area between white and black and then black is where I painted if I want to go back and see my image I just have to click on the adjustment layer again now if I want to see the effect of the adjustment layer applied or not all I have to do is toggle this little eyeball on and off and I can see sort of my before and after effects of that adjustment layer or if I want to see the effects of the layer mask, I can hold down shift and click on the layer mask and that basically turns that layer mask off. And I can do that as I'm editing to basically check the effect and make sure that I'm not going crazy with the adjustments. Now, as I already said, this was just an example so that it was really easy to see the difference. So let's still go ahead and delete this adjustment and we'll start over again. So here we are back with our base layer. Now let's make a much more reasonable levels adjustment. You can also do a curves adjustment, but I'm gonna start with a levels adjustment first. And I wanna be careful not to be blowing out any highlights, but bringing in sort of those shadow areas a little bit. Now again, notice that this adjustment is being applied to the entire image. And so I've lost all that brightness in the foreground and in the mountains, but I'm only focusing on how this adjustment is being applied to the sky because I'm gonna get rid of how it's being applied to the rest of the image. All right, so I, I like that right now, so we'll go with that. And again, because a white mask is being applied to this adjustment layer, I am seeing that layer applied to the entire image. So now we need to use a black paintbrush to paint away the adjustment from the rest of the image. Again, my hardness is way down. I'm gonna keep my opacity at 100 for this first pass, and I'm gonna just come in here and paint down here on the trees and a little bit into the mountains, but I'm not going up towards the edge of the mountains where the sky is, because I want to be very careful about that border. So now I'm going to make my brush just a little bit smaller and paint in a little bit closer to the sky. And now what I'm going to do to try to blend the sky area here and not get too halo-y around the mountains and the sky is to go down on my opacity of my brush, say to about 70%. And now I can go into that edge a little more confidently without getting a lot of haloing. So that looks pretty good. Now again, before the adjustment was applied, after the adjustment plus mask was applied, I get rid of the mask by hitting shift on the mask. This is before the mask was applied, after the mask was applied. So 
then I ask myself, well, what's the next thing I would like to change in this image? Well, I would like a little bit of contrast to come into the mountain area. So I'm going to do a similar thing. I'm going to do another levels adjustment. And now I'm going to just focus my eye on the, what the level adjustments are doing to the mountain area. So I want to add a little bit of contrast in there. Maybe like that. Okay. Now in this case, I think it'll be easier to paint in the mountains rather than painting out the sky. So a way to do that would be not to use a white mask, but a black mask. So if I hold down Command I, I've now inverted this mask from a white mask to a black mask. And now all I have to do is take a white paintbrush and paint on my black mask, the area where the mountains are. And that will reveal the adjustment layer in the mountain area wherever the white paint is applied. So let's make sure that with our color picker, we have our white paintbrush is selected. And let's go back over to our opacity and switch it to 100% and come in here and just try to paint in some of this contrast into the mountain areas without hitting the sky or the trees as much as I can. And again, these are just very minor adjustments, but as you'll see in the end, when we show all the before and afters, you'll see that it'll make a significant difference. So again, before, after, before, after. Okay, so I'd like to bring out the brightness of the trees a little bit. So we can do a brightness contrast adjustment for that. So let's give that a shot. So I've just added the brightness contrast. We've got the white layer. Let's go ahead and make the adjustment. Again, just paying attention to the trees. Maybe about there. Okay, you can also use this little eyeball here in this box to turn on and off the effect so that you can see it. Okay, so again, this white mask means that this adjustment layer is being applied to the whole image. I don't want it applied to the sky and only a little bit to the mountains. So I'm going to go ahead and use a black paintbrush and I'm going to select the mask. And with that black paintbrush, I'm going to paint away the adjustment on the sky. And I can always change my opacity and keep using this layer mask and paintbrush. I'm going to change my opacity to 50% and come in and just apply a little bit to the more shadowy areas of the mountain. All right, so again, let's do before and after, before and after. So I think that the sky could still use a little bit of contrast. So let's go ahead and apply a curves adjustment layer. And it's going to come in here and bring in a little more contrast to the sky without going too, too crazy. Again, I'm only focused on the sky and not what this adjustment is doing to the rest of the image because I'm going to mask it out. All right, let's leave it at that. So again, what do you think I grab at this point? I grab a black paintbrush so that I can paint away the white part of the mask that I don't want applied to the layer below. And if it's getting to be a little too much up and hit the sky, if I've crossed that border a little too much, I can change the opacity of my brush change the color of my brush back to white and then come in here and clean up these edges of the sky around the mountain. So I would like to make like a, a little glowy light maybe so it's not so dreary looking up here in the clouds and so I'm going to add a brand new layer as indicated by this white box with a plus sign in it and I can color this layer a little bit with my paintbrush with a pale yellow color such as this just to give a nice little bit of a warm glow to that area of the image. So to do that, like if I was just paint on it, it would just look like sp spray paint on the image, right? So we don't want to do that. So I'm going to, under the blend mode, I'm going to select soft light. That'll help blend it better. And I'm going to use a very low opacity brush, maybe like 2%. I'm going to make the brush a lot bigger. And I'm just going to paint into this area here and a little bit into the trees. And I can even just sort of highlight a couple of trees here and there and maybe a little bit of the grasses down below just to add a little more interest and detail um, a little bit on the areas of the mountain that should be collecting just a little bit more light than the rest in this cloudy scene 
and maybe I'll add a little of that glow to these brighter clouds as well. Okay, so the next thing I would like to do is darken up this reflective water area. And so I can do that again with a brightness contrast adjustment layer. So I've clicked on that. I'm gonna bring the brightness down maybe to about there, just so that it's not as eye-catching. And because this is just the tiniest part of the image, I think it'll be easier if I could paint that effect in rather than paint the rest of the image out on this layer mask. So instead of using a white layer mask where the adjustment is applied to everything, I'm going to invert it with Command I to a black layer mask, use a white brush to paint this back in. I'm gonna make sure that my blend mode is normal, my opacity is 100%. I've got my white brush selected and then I'm going to come in and very slowly just paint that back in and you can see that that makes that a little less noticeable. So I just want to show you the effects that we've built with these various adjustment layers and these layer masks. So I'm going to select all these layers by holding down shift and clicking the top and bottom and then if I click on this little folder looking icon that's going to create a group from all those layers and I can now toggle this group on and off. So you can see our before image where we had just made our adjustments in Lightroom and our after image. And I think that that's improved the image so far. So the next thing that I'm going to do is select the layers and I'm going to create a stamp of the layers. So basically merging them together into a new layer. I can always go back and modify the other layers, but this one will basically just create a snapshot of what we have with our adjustments applied. So it's gonna be Shift Option Command E now that new stamped layer is created. So the first thing I'm gonna do is go into my Dodge Burn tool, which is this little lollipop looking thing, is the Dodge tool. And I'm going to dodge the shadows. You can do shadows, midtones, or highlights. I'm gonna pick shadows. And if you set your exposure, you can play around with that to see how sensitive it is. Since this is fairly dark, I'm gonna start with a 10% dodge and just sort of click on it until it doesn't seem quite so dark and distracting. Likewise, I can do a little burning as well, which is darkening an area. So like for instance, this area up here, I feel like is a little too dark and distracting and it's a highlight. So again, with now this highlights are selected exposure, we can keep that at about 10. I'm gonna make my brush just a little bigger and just darken the top part of the frame just a little bit because you know we want our eyes to be going down into the frame. Okay, so the next thing that I'm going to do is, again, we can look at this on and off, how that's improved the image a little bit. And the last thing I'm going to do to this image is to fix those distractions at the edges of the image, and I'm going to use the healing brush tool for that, and I'm going to make that brush about the size of the stuff that I'm trying to get rid of, and you can see that Photoshop has gotten very good at getting rid of these distractions. I'm gonna get rid of some of these bright uh, sticks down here, because I feel like it's pulling the eye to the edge of the image and I don't want that to happen. The other thing that I'm finding a bit distracting in this image is how these trees are crossing over the mountains over here. And so I'm actually going to just get rid of the tops of these trees. <laughs> um, so I'm gonna get my brush way down. We can zoom way in and I'm just going to make those trees just a little bit shorter. So there's not quite as much interference with that line. Okay, so we can do another stamped layer. We can stick these into a group so that we can see our before and after. Before, after. And I like it. So the next thing would be to hit save. If you hit save, it'll save it back to your Lightroom catalog and it will save that file wherever your Lightroom catalog image is located. And it's a good idea to save it as a PSD file, even though that will take up a little bit more memory on your hard drive, because then you can always come back and play around with these various layers that you've created. If you let the image sit for a little while and you've decided that maybe you've overdone any part of those adjustments. So let me know in the comments below if you have any questions, if there was anything about this that you didn't understand. Hit subscribe if you want to see more videos like this and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks.